Today we're going to talk about bone tissue. I am Sharif Zalka. We welcome Medic Amicos. Medic Amicos, I hope you're doing great. So today this is our first lecture on bone histology. We're going to discuss bone cells, we're going to talk about bone matrix and also we're going to discuss bone linings and bone coverings. So let's get our beautiful lesson started. So bones in our body do a lot. They protect you. Bones do what? They protect you. They support you. Look at this. They protect you. They support you. They make blood cells. They make these cute blood cells. They store minerals in your body. They store minerals in your body. And they also serve as a levers for muscles in order to change muscle movements into body actions. So bones do a lot in your body. They protect you, support you, make blood cells, they store minerals and they are levers in your body. So before going to talk about the uh, components of the bone uh, tissue, let's first visualize the big picture of the bone tissue. We're going to visualize all the components of the bone tissue in only one diagram. Okay, so let's do that. Now, the bone tissue is made out of these, uh, look at this, the bone tissue is made out of these units, these uh, structural units, look at this. The bone tissue is made out of these uh, structural units called osteons. These units are called osteons or haversian systems. Look at these. These are structural units of your bones. These are all of these are called osteons or haversian systems. What are they? These guys are osteons. These are structures are osteons or haversian systems. Osteons or haversian systems. And these are your fundamental structural bone units. Now, each of these osteons are made out of these concentric, concentric layers. Look at these. They are made out of these concentric layers. All of them are made out of these concentric layers. These layers are called lamellas. These are lamellas. What are they called? These layers, these layers are actually bone matrix and they are called lamellas. These are lamellas, lamella. And in between these layers, we have these cavities, special cavities called lacunae. Look at these cavities. These are lacunae. So we have lacunae in between these layers, lacunae. What are they? They are lacunae. So lacunae are the same in all of these osteons. So let's work on only one diagram in here, one osteon only. And each of these osteons are connected via these canals. Look at these. Each of these lacunae, sorry, each of these lacunae are connected via these canals. Each of these lacunae are connected via these canals called canaliculi. So these are what? These are your lacunae, your cunae, and these are the canaliculi. Canaliculi, they are, they are connected via these canaliculi. And inside each of these, look at this, inside each of these lacunae sits your osteocytes. These are your osteocytes. Look at this. So these are your osteocytes. Inside each of these lacunae are your osteocytes. So this is a fundamental a structural unit called the osteon or the haversian system. Each of uh, these osteons have each of these osteons has these lacunae and colliculi and lamellas with their uh, osteocytes. Now, the thing is that all of these osteocytes or osteons are hold in place 
via a circumferential lamella called the external circum circumferential, circumferential lamella. Look at this. So we have, let me erase these. Okay, so you know that these are lacunae, these are canaliculi, these are lamellas. Now, so all of these structures are whole place, all of these structural units are hold in place via a circumferential, circumferential external lamella. This is your circumferential external lamella from the outside. And you have another layer, another circumferential lamella on the inside, which is called the internal circumferential lamella. This is, the, this is your internal circumferential lamella and this is your external circumferential lamella. And on the ex external circumferential lamella, you have your, look at this, these are your osteoblasts in osteoclasts. Osteoblasts in osteoclasts are all in here on this external circumferential lamella. Let's just draw it a little bit smaller. Okay, so you have these giant multinucleated osteoclasts and these osteoblasts. So these are osteoblasts. And they sit on the external circumferential lamella. And then once again, this whole thing is covered via a, a covering, a lining called the periosteum. This whole thing is covered via what? Via the periosteum from the outside. And from the inside, it is covered via the, let's use another color, it's covered via the endosteum. It is covered via the what? The endosteum. Look at this. From the inside, the internal circumferential lamella is covered via the endosteum. So this is the big picture of all the components that we're going to study today. So once again, let's name them now. So these units, these structural units are called osteons or haversian systems. And on each osteon, we have this canaliculis. Look at this, we have these canale canaliculi. These are your canaliculi. And we have, look at this. We have these lacunae, these cavities. These are your lacunae, and we have osteocytes in them. And we have a central canal. Look at this. This central canal is called the Haversian canal. The central canal is the Haversian, Haversian canal, and it has veins. It has veins and arteries. It has arteries, veins, and nerves in it veins and arteries and nerves come outside from those Haversian canals. Look at this, we have these veins, these arteries, arteries with the red uh, color, the nerves with the yellow color, and the uh, veins with the blue color. So the, these are all located within the Haversian canal. This whole thing is called the Haversian system and the canal in between them is called the Haversian Canal and it contains, it contains uh, arteries and veins and also nerves. So uh, we have lacunae, we have lamella, these layers of the osteum is called what? Lamella, lamella and canaliculi and lacunae osteocyte, the Haversian Canal the veins and the arteries and the nerve in the Haversian canal. And multiple Haversian system or multiple osteons are holded together via a circumferential lamella. This orange one is your circumferential lamella. This is your circum, look at this, your circumferential, external, external, circumferential lamella. It is held in place via a, uh, an external circumferential lamella and also an internal. This one is your internal 
circumferential lamella an internal circumferential lamella then on the external circumferential lamella we have osteoclasts and osteoblasts and then the whole thing is once again covered via the the periosteum this thing is your periosteum periosteum and on the inside it is covered the internal circumferential lamella is covered via the endosteum the endosteum and guess what we have a canal a big canal in the center as well this big canal in the center is your bone mar mar marrow sorry this is your bone marrow at the center so this is the big picture of all the components in the bone tissue now from here we can uh, easily classify all these components into three major categories how many three major categories the cells of the bones uh, the cells of the bone the matrix of the bone and also the coverings of the bone so now let's talk about each of them individually and in much more detail let's first talk about osteoblasts let's talk about cells okay let's first talk about cells so uh, we have uh, three main types of cells we have osteoblasts osteocytes and osteoclasts and there is one uh, one more type of cell which is called the osteoprogenitor cell Osteoprogenitor cell is not an independent cell. It is a precursor cell. It is, an, it is a stem cell. And the osteoprogenitor cell is going to develop into either of these three. So osteoprogenitor cell is not a, uh, an independent cell. That's why we're not going to classify this under the title of cells. But we will talk about it on the matrix at the, when we talk about the matrix of the bone. So we have three independent cell types, osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. All of these guys have definite, different function. All of the, 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 these, these cells have their own functions. Now, so let's first talk about osteoblasts in here. The word osteoblast is a Greek word. It's taken from osteon, which means bone, and blastos, osteoblast. Blastos means germ. Germ. So osteoblast literally means bone forming germs or bone forming buds. Germ or buds. Bone forming germs or buds. Or in much simpler words, osteoblasts synthesize bone matrix. They make your bone matrix. Now, osteoblasts are originated from mesenchymal stem cells. They are originated from where? From the MSCs or mesenchymal stem cells. They are originated from the mesenchymal stem cells. Osteoblasts are originated from mesenchymal stem cells. Now, they, these guys are located on the surface of the bone matrix. So this is our bone matrix. Let's consider this, that this is our bone. Look at this. This is our bone matrix. And on the surface of the bone matrix, you can find cuboidal osteoblasts. Osteoblasts form a single layer of cuboidal cells. Look at this. These are cuboidal cells, a single layer. Only one layer of cuboidal cells are found on the surface of your bone matrix and these cuboidal cells are connected to the matrix or attached to the matrix via these special proteins called the integrins these are your integrins they are connected via these integrins what's this protein called this is the integrin and each of these cuboidal cells are connected or attached to one another via gap junctions or adherent junctions. They are connected to one another via these gap junctions or adherent junctions. So this is about the location of the osteoblasts. They sit as a single layer of cuboidal cells on the bone matrix. Now, the functions of osteoblasts 
OCO blasts generally uh, have two functions. How many? They have two functions. Let's use a good color for this. Okay, so these guys have two functions. Their first function is forming osteoids. Forming what? Osteoids. Osteoids are, look at this, osteoids are newly formed matrix. These are newly formed matrix. They are wall matrix. Osteoids are wall matrix made by osteoblasts. And in order to uh, make them develop them to a ripe full matrix, calcium salts are added to it. So calcium salts are calcium salts are added to the osteoids in order to develop them uh, into full ripe matrix. So the first function of an osteoblast is forming osteoids. The second function of the osteoblast is bone mineralization. Bone mineralization. Now, this one's an interesting topic. So bone mineralization can be done when osteo osteoblasts uh, produce two specific type. Look at this, two specific type of structure. Osteocalcines, what? Osteo, osteocalcines and matrix vesicles. Osteocalcine and matrix vesicles. Both of these are produced by uh, osteoblasts. So osteocalcine is a vitamin K dependent polypeptide. It is a glycoprotein and osteocalcine is actually an os uh, a calcium binding protein which raises the concentration, the local concentration of who? Calcium. Raises the local, local concentration of calcium. Osteocalcine is a vitamin K dependent polypeptide and glycoprotein which raises the local concentration of calcium ions. And matrix vesicles are membrane enclosed vesicles and uh, they contain special, look at this, they contain special phosphatase called alkaline, alkaline phosphatase, alkaline phospha phosphatases and alkaline phosphatase increases the local concentration of phosphate ion local concentration of phosphate ion now look at this when you have enough local concentration of calcium ions and phosphate ions hydroxy appetite is made hydroxy Appetite crystals, appetite, appetite crystals are made. Hydroxy appetite crystals are made. Then the hydroxy appetite crystals will join in and, and attach with proteoglycans, proteoglycans, proteoglycans in collagen type 1 fibers. Collagen fibers, coll collagen type 1 fibers, and eventually your bone will be mineralized. When hydroxy appetite binds to proteoglycans and collagen fibers, then your bone is mineralized. So, bone mineralization will happen. So this is the process of bone mineralization. Uh, your osteoblasts will produce osteocalcine and matrix vesicles. Osteocalcine raises the local concentration of calcium. Matrix vesicles raises the local concentration of phosphate ion. These two ions will make hydroxy appetite. Hydroxy appetite will bind with proteoglycans and collagen type 1 fibers, and your bone is mineralized. That's it, bone mineralization. So there are two major functions of an osteoblast bone mineralization and osteoid formation. Now, when osteoblasts uh, completely done their job, uh, they will be pushed inside some of them. Some of the, them will be pushed inside these lacunae, these cavities inside the matrix. They will be pushed inside the matrix cavities or lacunae and they will eventually turn into osteocytes. 
look at them, the, they will turn into osteocytes. Some of them will turn into osteocytes. Some other will flatten, some other will flatten and they will become bone lining cells. Some of them will get flat and they will become bone lining cells. Look at this. These are your bone lining cells. Bone lining cells. And some other will undergo apoptosis. Some other will eventually die. Well, actually, the majority of them will die. The majority will, what? They will die. They will undergo apoptosis. So three things can happen when osteoblasts finish their job. They will either turn into osteocytes or they will become flat and will be called bone lining, bone lining cells. And they can also, the majority of them will undergo apoptosis and they will die. So this was all about osteoblasts. Now let's talk about osteocyte. The word osteocyte is also a Greek word and it's taken from osteon, which means bone, and kytos. Osteon means bone and kytos means cells. So osteocytes are literally the basic, the main cell, the main major cell of your bones. And uh, they are located inside lacunae uh, in between, they are located inside lacunae in between lamellus or bone matrix layers, which we have already discussed. Let's have, an, uh, let's have another demonstration as well. So this is your osteon. Let's just consider this is your osteon. And these are the lamella, the concentric layers, the lamella. And... Uh, in between the lamellas, we have canaliculi or cavities. Look at this. We have these canaliculi or cavities. And each of these cavities are connected via these canaliculi. Sorry, these cavities are called lacunae. And they are connected via canaliculi, via these canals. And inside... Inside these, look at this, inside, inside these lacunae, we have osteocytes. These are your osteocytes. Osteocytes are derived from osteoblasts, which we have discussed in here. And they have these dendritic extensions. They have dendritic extensions. Look at this. They have dendritic extensions. The, and the purpose of these dendritic the extension is two things. They are used for two jobs. They are used for two functions. So these dendritic cells will extend to inside these canaliculi and they will absorb nutrients. So the first function of the uh, dendritic processes is uh, absorbing nutrients. And another uh, function is that on the tip of the dendritic cells, there are some gap junctions. And using these gap junctions, two osteocytes can actually communicate. So they have gap junctions at the end of their processes, their dendritic processes, and that the, and those, uh, those uh, pro uh, gap junctions are, are used for communication between two osteocytes. So, now, uh, osteocytes, uh, you, can, you can clearly see that these canals and these lacunae and these lamella, and all of them are creating a network, a network which is called the lamellar canalicular network. Let me write this. There is a network on every osteon, and uh, on the whole bone, not only on the osteons, but the whole bone called the lacunar Sorry, the lamellar, the lamellar canalicular, canalicular network. The, 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 the lamellar canalicular network. And this network is used to connect all the cells of the bone, to connect 
almost everything in the bone. So uh, in this network, these osteocytes are mechanoreceptors. What are they? They are mechanoreceptors in the, this network of lamellars and canalicular, uh, canaliculi, mechanoreceptors. And, mechano, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and according to this function, they can detect mechanical loads, they can detect micro damage of the bone, and they can trigger remedial activity of osteoclasts and osteoblasts. They can do readings as mechanoreceptors. They can detect mechanical load, they can detect micro damages of the bone, and they can also trigger remedial activity of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So this was all about osteocytes. Now let's talk about osteoclasts, okay? So look at this. Osteoclast is also a Greek word. It's taken from osteon and clastos. Osteon once again means bone and clastos means broken. So osteoclasts are actually bone breaker cells. They break down your bones. These guys are large, multinucleated uh, cells. These guys are giant cells, big cells with multiple nuclei. So their origin is from the bone marrow. marrow. Let's have a cute bone over here. Look at this bone, okay? So this is a cute bone. Look at this. We have a cute bone in here. Look at him. Ah, this is your cute bone. And from the matrix of the bone, monocytes we, uh, are produced. So many monocytes, multiple monocytes from the bone, ma uh, bone marrow. Multiple monocytes. Look at this, multiple monocytes from the bone marrow will fuse together, will join together, and they will form a giant, look at this, a giant multinucleated cell called osteoclast. This is your, your, your osteoclast. And uh, the reason of multiple nuclei is because uh, of the multiple monocytes coming together and fusing together. So these are called your osteoclasts. Class. And the development of osteoclasts require two very important polypeptides. The development requires two very important polypeptides called the macrophage colony stimulating factor. And also, let me write this completely. This one's heck of a name. Look at this. Receptor activator receptor activator of a nuclear factor nuclear factor KB ligand huh, look at this this is the second polypeptide receptor activator of nuclear factor KB ligand and for short they write it RANKL R a N K L receptor activator of nuclear factor KB ligand. So the develop the development of osteoclasts require two factor factors: macrophage colony stimulating factor and ra receptor activator of nuclear factor KB ligand. Not ligand. Ligand. So we've said that osteo uh blasts osteoclasts are what they are bone breaker cells how how does osteoclasts break down bones so all right amico so we uh there are special cavities on the bone matrix look at this so let's just think that this is a bone matrix okay so there are these special cavities, look at these cavities. There are these special cavities on the bone matrix. These cavities. These are called Hauschip lacunae or resorption lacunae. And osteoclasts lies within these cavities. Look at this. 
These are your giant multinucleated osteoclasts. The giant multinucleated osteoclasts. And these are Hauship lacunae. Look at this. What are they called? These are called Hauship lacunae. All right. So now, uh, when osteoclasts are activated in these Hauship lacunae, they create a sealed zone, an enclosed zone. Look at this. They create this circular sealed zone. Circular sealed zone. This is called sealed zone. Circular sealed zone. The sealed zone has a different environment. The sealed zone has a low pH environment. It has an acidic environment. And inside and within the sealed zone, we have a ruffled border. Look at this. We have the, these projections. Look at this. We have these projections called the ruffled border. This is your ruffled border. Ruffled border is actually responsible for matrix digestion. Now, osteoclasts pump protons inside, pump protons and other hydrolytic enzymes, pump protons and other hydrolytic enzymes inside the sealed zone to acidify the environment, to make the environment just right for the ruffled border to, to digest the matrix. And so when the environment is ready, the ruffled border will digest the matri uh, matrix protein and hydroxy appetite of the matrix. And this way, bone uh, breakdown will be done and bone remodeling will be done. So this is the function, the mechanism of the function of the osteoclast using sealed zone and ruffle border. So this was all about osteoclasts. Now let's talk about the matrix of the bone. So the matrix of the bone is, uh, look at this, look at this picture, look at this diagram in here. This whole thing is a matrix. These all of these concentric uh, layers, all of these lamellas, these in, uh, the, these external circumferential lamella, internal circumferential lamella. All of these are the bone matrix. Now all of this region is divided into two components. How many components? Two components. We have two components of the bone matrix. Okay organic components of the bone matrix and inorganic components of the bone matrix organic and inorganic so 50 percent of the dry weight 50 percent of the dry weight of the matrix is inorganic components it's made out of inorganic component and these inorganic components uh, include uh, hydroxyapatite crystals, hydroxyapatite crystals, uh, also citrate ions, bicarbonate ions, also magnesium ions, calcium phosphates, calcium phosphates, we have more ions, sodium ions, sodium ions and much more so we have hydroxyapatite citrate bicarbonate magnesium sodium and calcium phosphates so all of these are inorganic component of the matrix now the most abundant of all of these is hydroxyapatite most abundant and most important inorganic component is your hydroxyapatite and these guys these crystals are actually have uh, and high a hydrolyzed surface a hydrolyzed a hydrolyzed surface which makes it possible uh, for uh, which makes ion exchange which makes ion exchange very possible ion exchange which makes ion exchange possible now on the organic side we 90% of the organic components are made out of collagen fibers, especially type 1 collagen 
fibers, and we have osteo other proteoglycans and glycoproteins like osteocalcine, osteonectine. We have phosphatases like alkaline phosphatases and much more. So look at this, osteonectin is a new term in here. The word is actually taken from osteon, which means bone, and nectine, osteon and nectine. Nectine means binding. So osteonectin is a bone binding substance. Substance is it is actually like a glue. It's, it sticks the components of the bone matrix together. That is osteonectin. So this was all about the matrix component of the bone. Now let's talk about the covers or the linings or the coverings of the bone. So we have two types of coverings: the periosteum and the endosteum. Okay, how many? Two types. We have periosteum. Periosteum, and we have endosteum, two types, endosteum, periosteum and endosteum. Periosteum is also divided into two other types, As, uh, a fibrous outer layer and a cellular inner layer. We have two types. Periosteum fibros, a fibrous inner layer, and also a cellular, cellular outer, sorry, a cellular inner layer and a fibrous outer layer. The outer, so it, it, it has two layers, an outer layer and an inner layer. The outer layer is fibrous and the inner la layer is cellular. The fibrous outer layer is made out of dense connective tissue. It's made out of dense connective tissue. And it contains uh, collagen type 1 fibers. It has fibro fibroblasts. It has fibroblasts or fibroblasts. And all right, Amico. So it also has uh, blood vessels in it. Blood vessels. Now, cellular inner layer. The cellular inner layer contain, look at this, they contain osteoblasts. The cellular inner layer contains osteoblasts and uh, bone lining cells, bone lining cells. And also a very important type of cell called the osteoprogenitor cell. Osteoprogenitor cells. So osteoprogenitor cells are precursor cells. These guys are stem cells and they develop and they give rise to they give rise to osteoblasts. These guys are stem cells for osteoblasts. They give rise to osteoblasts. So this was all about the periosteum. Now endosteum. The endosteum uh, is uh, it also contains osteoblasts, contains osteoblasts, blasts, uh, endosteum contains uh, bone lining cells, bone lining cells, and endosteum also has a sparse, a sparse delicate network of collagen fibers sparse delicate network of collagen type 1 fibers and endosteum covers the trabecula of the bone marrow so uh, the rest medic amico were done with our today's lecture so this was all you need to know about bone cells bone matrix and also bone coverings i hope this was useful Please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you in the next lecture.